Hey folks, we're making a video on how a hit and miss engine works. And also I'm gonna throw in there how a four stroke engine works. So we'll go through all four strokes. And I'm going to apologize ahead of time. I over explained myself way too many times in this video, but I really wanna get my point across cause well, I'm just not very good at explaining things. So hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, so let's start with intake stroke. During this stroke, the engine's at, uh, the, the rod and piston here are at top dead center. And during the intake stroke, our air fuel mixture is going to get, is going to go up through the carburetor in through our intake valve into the cylinder. So we're going to suck that air fuel mixture into the cylinder. So during this process, engine's going to come back, suck that fuel in, fuel and air, and come down to bottom dead center. This is your intake stroke. So during intake stroke, it creates a vacuum. And this vacuum actually opens this intake valve. See how there's no rocker arm on the intake valve? That vacuum actually pulls this intake valve open, sucks our fuel and air in, brings it back into the cylinder, and now we're gonna come up on... I meant to say uh, compression stroke. We're coming up on compression stroke. For whatever reason, I said power stroke, but intake, now compression stroke. We're actually going to compress this air fuel mixture. You're gonna hear a click here in a second from the mag. It's compressing the air and fuel mixture. Bam. So that there just lit basically a fire inside of our cylinder and it created a bunch of pressure. All that pressure is now going to force our rod and piston back. And all the power from the rod and piston are transferred to your crankshaft, which makes everything turn. So now that we went through intake, compression, we're now on power stroke. So all that combustion just forced our piston back. Now, we're a few degrees before bottom dead center now. And here's a really important part. So all of our air and fuel mixture just burned. Now we have this carbon and hopefully all burnt fuel, whatever's left in the cylinder now needs to be forced out. So our rod and piston's on bottom dead center, being pushed back. Now there's no more compression in the engine at this point because if you can see here, our rocker arm is pushing the exhaust valve open. So now all that exhaust gas is being pushed out of the engine. And this is really important part, well, in any four stroke engine, but a hit and miss engine. We will get to how that works with the exhaust valve here in a minute. So now we just completed exhaust stroke and we're gonna go back to the four strokes again. Intake, compression, power stroke, exhaust. All right, so now we're at the, the actual hit and miss governed part of the engine. So here's our governor rate, weights, right? So as the engine speeds up, it's firing, firing, firing. You know, I might fire a couple times before it gets to the proper speed. So during that process, as it fires, these weights are gonna fly out. See how they move, they're hinged on the flywheel. If you see here, as those governor weights fly out and this engine gains momentum, here's our latch out. You can see that whole mechanism moving here. So what's gonna happen is, as these fly out, you can see this small little gap or tab, I guess you could call it, on this push rod. As it flies out, this is going to actually latch, and I'll make a slow motion video of it, and you guys can see it. This will latch and hold the exhaust valve open. So when our exhaust valve is open during this process, the engine's just coasting. You can't suck fuel because all the air is actually being drawn in and out of the exhaust. 
so no fuel will be drawn through the carburetor. I know it's kind of a weird concept, but in reality, it's kind of efficient. You know, the, the momentum of the engine is being, you know, basically all that momentum's in these flywheels. All that mass is, is what's keeping this engine turning. So what we'll do, we'll get this thing fired up, and I will show you guys a slow motion video of the latch out, the exhaust, and the governor weights, and you can see how this properly works. It's hard for me to explain without it running. All right, so I wanted to explain things a little bit better before we get the engine going here. So let's identify some parts. Obviously, our governor weights are circled in the blue there. And those governor weights are connected to, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but there's a circular deal that's circled in red. And what that does is that slides left and right on the crankshaft. Now our latch out arm that is circled in green actually kind of sits inside that circular piece. So that's kind of what ties your governor weights to the latch out arm. That's kind of the, the deal circled in red is kind of in between those two. If I had better pictures, I'd definitely throw that on here for you guys. But um, so as the governor weights fly out, it pulls that, I don't know, that round bushing toward the flywheel, which uh, pushes your latch hour arm into the push rod. And if you guys remember earlier, there's that little notch in the push rod. Now the push rod is circled in purple, and that's ran by your camshaft for your valve timing. So hopefully that's a little bit better explanation um, let's start the engine, and you'll actually be able to see the whole thing in action. All right, so we got the governor weights here. As the engine speeds up and it fires, the weights spread out. Now, as those weights spread out, you can see the latch over there. It latches into the push rod and holds the exhaust valve open. And now, it, right now, where it sits, it is sitting here coasting. So it is up to speed. And that spring you see there, that's how you change the speed on some of these earlier engines. Uh, obviously, the more tension you have on that spring, the, the faster it will run. All right. So you can see right there the governor weights are kind of mounted, obviously, on the flywheel, but they, they L down toward that. I guess you could say bushing and that slides left and right which uh, moves your latch out arm and if you watch real close that bushing will start to work its way in that engine's starting to slow down and it's gonna want to fire right here toward the end Now we have our push rod up to our rocker arm. Right now the engine's coasting. You can see it holding the exhaust valve open. Now it just opened the valve or closed the valve and then it just fired. So when the engine is being the exhaust valve is being held open, this is during the miss part of the hit and miss engine. If you see my red arrows here. There's, there's essentially no compression in the engine at this point because, like I said, it's just coasting. Air is at, being pushed and sucked through uh, the exhaust valve. It's just going back and forth, back and forth. There's no compression in the engine. The engine's coasting. It's just freewheeling at this point. If you've ever turned an engine over with compression, it's got resistance. If you ever pull the spark plug out, and you try to turn an engine over, it turns over really easy. That's essentially what's happening here during the miss portion of hit and miss. 
All right, so we kind of now know the term of hit and miss, right? So the engine's not flaring, but how is it not sucking fuel, right? Well, you can, as you can see here is the intake valve, and I don't know if you remember me talking about it earlier, this atmospheric valve. So there's no rocker arm on it. The vacuum of the engine actually will pull that valve open and suck your fuel air mixture into the cylinder. So during uh, the hit and miss portion when the engine is missing, it's sucking air in and out of the exhaust valve. There's no vacuum in the engine to suck fuel up. So you'll see here in just a second, you'll watch this exhaust valve when it comes up on intake stroke and the exhaust valve closes. Watch this valve, it'll, it'll open up. So you can see it sucking that uh, intake valve open and now fuel was coming up, fuel and air was coming up through the carburetor into the cylinder on your intake stroke. So at the end of the day, four stroke engine, right? Intake, compression, power stroke, exhaust. And that's your four strokes of your engine. And then I kind of explained how the hit and miss portion works. If it didn't make any sense, let me know. Uh, I'm going to go through, I didn't explain the mag and the oiler and all how everything else works or the carburetor. I was kind of just really concentrated on the hit and miss portion. Uh, there is a lot of different governor setups besides the one that's on this engine. This, this governor here, the governor weights are on the flywheel. Some are separate. They look like a little flyball governor. The concept still works the same. You're essentially using the exhaust valve to govern the engine. Uh, and where like a throttle governed is using a, a throttle plate to adjust how much air fuel mixture is going into the engine. It's still using a similar governor setup, but uh, fuel is still being drawn in every four strokes. Whereas this here, when it fires after, it's, uh, after it goes through its four strokes, it's essentially coasting. It's like no compression. It's like pulling the spark plug out of an engine and it's just air in, air out, no compression. So I, I hope the explanation was good. I'm not very good at explaining things, but I, I thought it should be put out there. And here through the rest of the video, I'll just throw uh, some more footage of the drip oiler uh, and the mag, how it's kind of working. And I have some other videos that show the mag working and how the points work. So appreciate you guys watching. Enjoy the rest of the video. Here's our latch out, holding this exhaust rocker open, coasting, no compression. Opens, fires. During that process, when it unlatches, it comes up on that intake stroke, sucks in that fuel, goes through its four strokes, fires, gains momentum, launches back out again. She is just happy girl today.